Thank you very much. Um, Judge Fitzgerald, to go to your good co, bad co example, when the division takes place, how does anyone know that all of the injured parties have been found yet? How does one know the scope of the total injury that has been inflicted? I don't think they do know that, Senator. What they know is the number of suits that have been filed against them and or complaints that have um, somehow come to their attention, not necessarily formal complaints. In all of these cases, there are huge numbers of future demands, which is one of the reasons that Congress foresaw the need for Section 524G. Um, so I'd, I don't think it's possible to know. And what happens to lawful claims for punitive damages? Well, that depends on the particular case. In the bankruptcy code, punitive damages are generally subordinated to other types of claims. Um, it depends on the state law, what has happened in many of the mass tort bankruptcy cases. What happens if the total injury exceeds the trust amount? Does BADCO have a continuing claim against assets of GoodCo to fill in any gaps? That depends, Senator, again, on what the relationship between the parties um, is. In the case of the funding agreements, um, the, the assertions have been made that that's the case. But in fact, there are cross indemnities, generally speaking, such that if BADCO pays out money, then GoodCo is supposed to reimburse. But if GoodCo pays out money, BADCO is supposed to reimburse. So the, the net effect is not necessarily clear, first of all. And is secondly, GoodCo a party in the bankruptcy proceeding? I'm, I'm sorry? Is GoodCo ordinarily a party in the bankruptcy proceeding? It's, it's, you, no, it's not a party unless it has co liability with the debtor. To that extent, it is a, 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 essentially a party. It's a named party. But the problem is that GoodCo usually has independent, or the allegations are that GoodCo has independent liability, which would not be part of the bankruptcy estate. And how about evidence, discovery, corporate documents, things like that? When okay. somebody's been injured by a corporate entity, usually there's a very robust discovery. That discovery can continue really until the eve of trial on some occasions. And um, I'm familiar with times when documents have been discovered that completely change the complexion of the liability. When Ms. Naranjo is sent to BADCO, what rights does she have and what rights do her lawyers have to continue discovery and document production and so forth against GoodCo? Well, they still have rights. The problem is that the, the way the operation has worked in bankruptcy is that those rights are stayed and generally temporarily, if not permanently, enjoined. And so although there may be rights to discovery, they're not accessible. The, the system simply is not sufficient in that respect to deal with those issues. So discovery effectively stops Yes. at the, when the Texas two-step two begins. Well, it stops as to GoodCo. Yes. It, yes. And there's no reason for GoodCo to turn over all of its documents to BADCO, is there? Certainly not. In fact, that would be counter to the purpose of the operation, assuming uh, the purpose of the operation is to protect the assets of GoodCo. That would be my opinion, yes, sir. Um, Mr. McLeod, do you have any response to any of those comments that I just made? I've got another minute before I turn it over to uh, Senator Kennedy. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I think you've made an excellent point and suggested an excellent point, which is that GoodCo uh, isn't a bankrupt. It's not supposed to get the protections of the bankruptcy, but it gets to enjoy those protections at the same time as like a puppet on a string, it controls BADCO because BADCO has overlapping officers and directors with GoodCo and the rest of the corporate family. It's really just a, uh, an illusion, Your Honor, to think of, of BADCO as anything other than an empty shell, as even some of the courts uh, applying these bankruptcies have recognized. Makes and one think of the old doctrine of piercing the corporate veil. You're exactly, you're exactly right, Your Honor, that, not Your Honor, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, Sorry. that uh, 
<laughs> you can tell I'm a lawyer, uh, that uh, there are supposedly remedies that, that will work, but what we're talking here about time. People don't have 10 years to wait for all of this to play out. People are dying now, people need to get paid now, and ultimately this is all about delay. That's the whole point. And so justice delayed is justice denied, uh, Mr. Chairman.